Hi, I'm working on my Sunday meal prep, and one question I get most often is, what do I eat for breakfast? So a lot of times, most of the time, my clients, they suffer from some sort of metabolic imbalance. What the heck does that mean? So that means that maybe their insulin receptors aren't working correctly, maybe there's some insulin um, resistance in there, maybe pre-diabetes, maybe they have already developed type two diabetes. Um, there's all sorts of different things. If something's going on with the cells, we need to restore cell sensitivity. And so what we wanna do when we're working on situations like that is reduce carbohydrates, especially first thing in the morning. And so while I'm not really big um, on the keto diet, um, I do like plant-based keto diet. But one of my concerns is lots of fat. There's a lot of fat in keto. It's mostly fat. People think high protein, but it's really more fat than anything else. And so if you do have certain genetic tendencies, then that might not be your best source. So what do we do for breakfast? Why does it have to be so confusing? It doesn't have to be that confusing. And um, we know that fruits and vegetables are our most important nutrients for vitamins and minerals. We need those in the day. Um, we also have, can see in the studies that it's important to have protein for breakfast. And so how can we get protein in the breakfast if we're not eating animal products? Well, you could always use some kind of beans or grains, but in certain situations, especially when you are suffering with a metabolic disorder, which I just saw a study that said 92% of Americans um, have a metabolic, um, I want, don't want to, I don't like the word disorder, but metabolic, imbalance that's a much better word and so 92 percent that means only eight percent of us are metabolically healthy so that's nuts what can we do to help that well let's start our day with a quote unquote keto green breakfast um, what i'm making today is going to have a healthy fat it's going to have protein and it's going to have vitamins minerals from fruits and vegetables so, um, what i'm going to start with i'm making for two people i'll make two different versions um, I have a cup of water here in this two cup mason jar. And then I need to choose a fat source, a green, and I'm using protein and then a flavoring. So I'm using pea protein. Um, pea protein is a very clean um, plant protein source. And whenever you buy pre pea protein, make sure you read and look for any added ingredients. We want the cleanest um, we can get. So this is just plain pea protein no flavors or anything else added alone it tastes terrible but it's very high in lots of different amino acids so i have a cup of water i have one scoop of protein i could put two scoops in there next i need a healthy fat so what are healthy fats avocado is an excellent fat i could cut this avocado or i can even buy it frozen in these chunks how easy is that um, we want to make sure we're getting a good balance of omega-3 fatty acids. And we find those in walnuts, hemp seeds, chia seeds, um, walnuts, chia seeds, hemp seeds, and flax seeds. I have flax seeds right here, flax seeds. So we want to make sure we have a healthy fat. Now, I'm not using a plant-based milk. Most store-bought plant-based milks have gums and fillers. So I'm just gonna make my own. How would I make almond milk? I would throw in almonds in water. Well, why don't I just do that since I'm making a chia pudding anyway? I'm not gonna notice. Um, if I drink oat milk, I could put oats in there. If you are suffering with a metabolic imbalance, it's a good idea to avoid oats for a few weeks while you restore it. Am I saying we're good permanently? Not at all. I love oat groats, especially at sprouted oat groats, but when I'm working in a repair process, I'm gonna take a few weeks off of that. So today I'm gonna to be throwing almonds in here, any nuts or seeds. So this is just to make my um, plant-based milk. So I have almonds, just one handful. Now my healthy fat. So I want this to be nice and thick, so I'm gonna be throwing in two tablespoons of chia seeds. And just for extra kicks and giggles, I'm going to throw in two tablespoons of flax seeds. Now these are not ground because I'm using a Vitamix. If I was not using a Vitamix, I would grind them in a coffee um, grinder first, just to break them down, because that is a very, very hard shell. You can see how small they are, and it's not gonna get broken down. It's gonna pass through my body. I'm not gonna get those nutrients unless I grind it down. So now I have my water, I have my flax seeds, I have my chia seeds, and I have a handful of almonds. So the almonds are an omega-6 fatty acid, which is healthy, 
but I need to make sure I get a good balance so I have the flax seeds and the chia seeds to help balance that out. Next, I need a green. If you're not used to greens in your um, drinks, then you wanna start with something mild. Something mild like romaine. My child likes romaine. Um, bok choy, this is chopped bok choy. That's what I will put in here. Or Napa cabbage. That's a very mild green. I already have this chopped. I need to use it up anyway, so I'm going to throw it in. Or even spinach. Spinach is another one that is very mild. And then I need to add some flavoring. So I could add some vanilla. I could add some cocoa. Or I could even add some coconut butter. So coconut butter can actually help with the um translation for you to change from short chain fatty acids to long chain fatty acids what does that mean to help with inflammation so a little bit of coconut butter is fabulous now would i want to eat the whole jar no this is a saturated fat so like i said earlier if you have certain genetic tendencies you may want to have just a little bit or avoid it all together um, for me i like chocolate so i'm going to make this one a chocolate chia thick keto plant-based breakfast so i'm putting i don't know how much about two tablespoons of cocoa once again this is for two people in here so i have my greens i have my healthy fat i have my protein and i have my flavoring now i'm ready to mix it up All right, if it's too thick, I could add a little bit more water and I have water on the side just in case this looks delicious. Make sure I don't pour it in my other cup of water. So you can see I have this chocolate smoothie here. It will thicken up in the fridge because it does have the chia and the flax. It is going to continue to get even thicker. So we have the omega-3 fatty acids, which help with inflammation. We have the cacao powder, which is an antioxidant, which is wonderful for DNA repair. And we have the greens, very high in vitamin K and other minerals. And I'm going to top it all with, I don't want to put my spoon in there, I might forget. We're gonna to top it all off with some berries. So if you are worried about your metabolic health, um, you need to make sure you test. You can test your blood sugar. Um, some people wear CGMs, glu continuous glucose monitors. Some people have glucose um, checks. Now, if you don't want to do all that, just see how you feel after you eat these things. If two hours after you eat this, you're starving again, either A, you didn't eat enough, or B, it wasn't the right food source for you and your blood sugar spiked and then dropped too far. And so that means the next day, try to switch out whatever you put on top of this food. So I'm going to be adding, this is a triple berry mix, frozen berries. And um, sometimes people ask me, is it okay to eat? Is that a safe food to eat? Well, right now this is February and these berries do not grow here where I live um, this time of year. They were picked, whenever you buy frozen berries, they were picked at their peak ripeness. If I were going to peak berries to sell, I would probably peak them a few days before they're ripe so that they're ripe when you come to buy them. But if I'm going to freeze them, then I pick, pick them right when they taste perfect and then freeze them. And so they're actually gonna be even healthier and tastier. So here's our first keto plant-based smoothie. Now, let me make another one. So let me grab another base. All right, so once again, I'm going to start with one cup of water, which I have one cup of water in this two cup jar. I'm gonna go ahead and add the same protein. Still doing one scoop, I could do two. Maybe I feel like we need extra protein today. So for my healthy fat, I'm gonna add hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are very high in protein as well as omega-3 fatty acids. So let me put a tablespoon of those, maybe two. Um, I, did, I used water instead of a plant-based milk. So today let's add some more almonds to give us 
that almond milk flavor. And then for the healthy fat, let's do some avocado. So avocado, see it's green. It's a green food. That is adding healthy fat, lots of fiber, and also B vitamins, um, vitamin K, vitamin E. So now we have our healthy fats. So that counts as a green, but let's add some more greens too. So today let's put some spinach in here. I want to just fill it up with spinach. Now I didn't put flax or chia, so it may end up being a little bit watery. If so, I can just throw some chia and flax in there. So let me blend it up. if it looks too liquidy maybe a little liquidy but i think it'll be just fine but i forgot to add flavoring so today let's put a little bit of vanilla in this one just a touch now i could also add stevia and i meant to bring the stevia leaves over so stevia is something that is very controversial i have stevia extract here that i made myself you can see my handwritten here and so when you see the liquid can you see that color it's kind of a brownish green that's because stevia is from a plant. So what I did is I used the leaves, the dried leaves, to make my own stevia extract. So when you buy stevia, if it is white, like the white powder, that is not a natural form of stevia. So that is why it's controversial. Stevia is from an herb, so you can use the powder, which is not white. Um, it's ground up herbs. It's gonna have a greenish color, just like the herbs. Or you can use an extract, which you can see is kind of dark. Um, but just maybe a half a dropper full for something like this. All right, so I added in my vanilla. And now I'm ready to pour it into my jars. Now, I'm, I like topping mine with berries. And I didn't talk about that. Let me talk about why I'm adding something on top. Still a little bit left in there, but that's okay. So I'm using um, red raspberries. So number one, berries are very high in antioxidants. So wonderful for cellular health, DNA repair, um, a cancer fighter, all of those. Also one of Dr. Furman's um, G-bombs. He says to eat berries every day. But whenever we have a smoothie or something like this, I want you to eat it, not drink it. Don't drink your smoothies. Like through a straw, so many people do that. I could drink a smoothie in just a matter of seconds, especially when it's this size, right? And so I drink it in a couple of seconds and I'm like, I still need to eat. And so I'm gonna end up overeating throughout the day. But if I put berries on top, maybe top a little bit more nuts and seeds on top, then it's gonna take me a while to eat it. I'm gonna feel nice and satisfied at the end. I'm not gonna feel like I need to eat anything else. So here are our plant-based keto breakfast. We have a chocolate one with a mixed berries we have a green vanilla one with raspberries you can see the options are endless the water i could use any kind of nuts to flavor the water a good protein powder make sure you read the ingredients if you don't want to use a protein powder then use hemp seeds hemp seeds are very high in a plant protein pick a flavoring cocoa vanilla stevia uh, cocoa butter Pick a green, start with the milder greens if you haven't had greens before. So spinach, bok choy, napa cabbage, romaine, spring mix, all of those are nice and mild. You don't taste the green in them. A healthy fat, avocado, chia seeds, walnuts, flax seeds, and then top it with something so that you chew. Make sure you chew to release the enzymes in your mouth to help break down. Um, carbohydrates. Carbohydrate digestion begins in the mouth. Anyway, if you make these recipes, please let me know. Like and share my videos. Share my videos with your friends. Comment and let me know what else you would like to see and learn about. Enjoy!